everyone to Couch Potato Diary. Happy Friday. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Coming up on the show, we are going to be looking at, uh, it's a fight in Friday. So we're looking at UFC 305 plus coming off of uh, SummerSlam. Now it's behind us. Let's look ahead to WrestleMania 41 and let's book what we think will be on uh, the show of shows uh, when it takes over Las Vegas, Nevada uh, in April next year. So it's going to be very busy. Thank you all so much for joining us today. begin with UFC 305 preview. Um, the overall, I think this is an okay card. It's not a, a blow away amazing card or anything like that. Um, but I, I, I am interested in uh, a few of the things on this one. And so um, we're, we're just going to go main card, um, but we're just going to go fight by fight and, and break this thing down. So up first, it is Li Jingyang. Uh, taking on Carlos Paredes in the welterweight division. I promise the pronunciations are going to get better as we go along. Um, but uh, coming into this one, you have a... Um... You have Xiang, who is 36 years old, six feet tall with a 71 and a half inch reach, born in China, training at Killcliffe FC. He uh, is 19 and eight for his MMA career, seven wins by knockout, five by submission, um, and uh, by uh, two submission losses. Sorry, my typing's all weird on this. A uh, couple submission losses and a couple decision losses on the resume as well. Um, he is coming off of a split decision loss to Daniel Rodriguez at UFC 279. Originally, he was scheduled to face Tony Ferguson in that bout. That changed after Hamzat Shemaev missed weight and every went, everything went batshit crazy on that particular night. Um, but he hasn't fought since. That was September 10th, 2022. He's been dealing with a spine injury, uh, but he is back now. He's alternated wins and losses in his last six. He has been in the Ultimate Fighting Championship since 2014. 11 and six is the record there. Eight stoppages, all but one of those in the first round. He's a B uh, BJJ black belt, former legend FC welterweight champion, won it in his last pre-UFC bout. Uh, he's been a pro since 2007. Taking on Pretas, who is 30 years old out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, training at Vale Top Team. Um, he is 19 and 6, 14 wins by knockout, another three by submission, two losses by knockout, one by submission. His last bout came at uh, Ultimate Fight Night in June, so just a couple of months ago, where he knocked out Charlie Radke in the first round. It's his ninth straight win, his eighth straight finish, and his first um, at five, sorry, in the first round. He's 2-0 in the Ultimate Fighting Championship with a second round finish and a first round finish. He did fight on Dana White's Contender Series winning there. He has also fought in LFA and won championship, and he's been a pro since 2012. Um, this is a really, really intriguing fight to me. Freitas is, like we said, on some kind of a roll right now. But when Lee is at his finest, he doesn't lose to guys like this. And so you have the unknown of, well, this guy hasn't fought in basically two years, um, 23 months since he last stepped into the cage. So what are we getting from this guy? I think is a very reasonable question to, 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 to ask. And so it, it is... It's going to be an interesting bout. Um, one of the things that Liang has had trouble with in the past is um, having a bit of trouble with some of the reach issues that he has had um, and or some of the, the, the reach deficiencies, I guess, that he has had some problems with in the past. I don't think Praetis provides a whole lot of those. It is an interesting, just like I said, it's, it's a really intriguing bout to me and so uh pulling up the odds here really quickly um oh no that's the wrong website that's the wrong website give me a sec no that's still the wrong website boy i am out of practice on all of this apologies uh to, to everyone who is uh listening in right now because that was all all over the place uh but yes coming up on saturday ufc uh, back to Saturday. I don't know why I went back to Friday. Looking at the odds on this one, finally, um, that we get to, we see Leong as a plus 300 underdog. Um, I I think that there is a, a little bit of hype around Praetis, obviously. Um, 
That's not a bad underdog play. I, I think Leong is a really, really strong fighter. Predis is on a, an incredible role. We just haven't seen Leong in a couple of years. Um, and admittedly, losing to Daniel Rodriguez is tough. I, I will say most um, media members had Leong winning that fight um, on their scorecard. I was watching it in Saskatchewan, just had a lot of people around, so I, I don't quite recall um, how I had that. But 21 of 23, I think the number was, for uh, for, for media members who uh, scored that in favor of the man from China. Um, and I, I think, honestly, if there's a win at the top of the Wikipedia page, at the top of his, his sure dog fight finder, then maybe we are getting a a more um, even line. But I think Leong at plus 300, actually not the worst way to go. Um, and if you are going to want to put a bit of um, put a bit of money down on uh, Pratis, let's see, do we have fighter props here? Not on this site. Um, again, sorry, I should have had all this stuff lined up ahead of time but uh overall it's you know um bit tricky here so let's see if we can find it i hate that they put these all over the place um okay so this site only has leong as a plus or a plus 270 um if, if you think that this is greatest who's going to win this go the plus 139 and just go under one and a half rounds because if he wins it i think he's winning it pretty quick the longer it goes i think the more it favors uh leong then in the heavyweight division, it's tied to Ivasa going up against Jarzinho Rosenstruck. To Ivasa, 31 years old, born in Sydney, Australia. So he'll be the hometown guy tonight uh, as this bout is taking place in Perth. Um, training at AKA, he's 14 and 7. 13 wins by knockout, 1 by decision. Uh, he's been knocked out 3 times and submitted 3 times uh, of the 7 fights. His most recent loss was a submission loss to Marcin Tybora in uh, Ultimate Fight Night on March 16th. 2024 it's four straight losses he's been finished in all of them that came after a five fight winning streak where it felt like there was something there with this guy um but it just it's it, it's been really really difficult to to for Tai to Ivasa over the last little while his last decision was a loss back at UFC 238 against Blagoy Ivanov uh that was June 8th 2019 the last time he won a decision was almost a Full year before that, uh, UFC 225 against Andre Arlovsky, June 9th, 2018. He's been in the UFC since 2017, eight and seven in the promotion, seven wins by knockout, six times he's been finished in losses. He's a pro since 2012. He started on a nine fight win streak. Uh, he also was five and two as a boxer. Going up against Rosenstruck, who is 36 years old, born in Suriname, um, training out of ATT. He is 14 and five in his career, 13 wins by knockout, one by decision. He's been knocked out twice and submitted once. His most recent fight, uh, he won by knockout against Shamil Gaziev back on a fight night card on March 2nd of 2024. He's won two of three after a two fight winning streak. He hasn't been to a decision in his last four fights. Um, you look at the the losses he has had in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Jailton Almeida, uh, who is a, a fast rising prospect. Alex Volkov, Curtis Blades, Cyril Gunn, and Francis Ngannou. He's been in the UFC since 2018. He's eight and five in his career. All eight wins by knockout. He's been finished in three of his losses. A pro since 2012. Started his career with 10 wins in a row. Uh, pro kickboxer from 2009 to uh, 2017, where he went 76, 8, and 1. Um, I I like Tai Tuivasa a lot. I do not see a path to victory for Ty in this bout. I think Rosenstruck comes out and just absolutely um, runs through him. I, I think that he is a more technical fighter. I think that he is a more precise fighter. Um, and quite frankly, though, when you're looking at at placing a wager down on, on Rosenstruck, there isn't a whole lot there of value. Um, Rosenstruck is minus 222. It is a bit better by TKO or by KO. Um, Minus 161 is uh, Rosenstruck to win by KO or TKO. I still just don't see it in the, the cards for um, Ty. If you think that maybe Ty can hold on a little bit or that this fight's going to be a bit more evenly matched than I thought, you can go over one and a half rounds right now at plus 170. That's not the, the worst kind of value play, uh, but Rosenstruck, I think, gets the win in this bout uh, probably pretty 
handily. Up next, a really interesting bout in the lightweight division as Matush Gamrot takes on Dan Hooker. Gamrot is 33 years old, born in Poland, training at uh, Zerwani Smuk. He is 24 and 2 with one no contest, eight wins by knockout, another five by submission, and he has never been stopped in his pro MMA career with just two decision losses um his last bout a unanimous decision win at ufc 299 against rafael dos Anjos. it's his third straight win uh two by decision and one was by tko but that was by injury um he has won seven of his last eight finishing four of them he is a former two division champion in ksw in the lightweight and featherweight division he's been in the ufc since 2020 amassing a seven and two record in the promotion after being a pro since 2012 dan hooker coming in at 34 years old um born in auckland new zealand training out of tiger muay thai and city kickboxing he is 23 and 2 for his career um with uh, 11 wins by knockout seven wins by submission sorry 23 and 12 uh 23 and 12 on the career i uh, got that one wrong um but still a, uh, I think a very, very talented fighter. His last win, a split decision win against Jalen Turner back at UFC 290. It's back-to-back -back wins after back-to-back -back losses. He's been finished in both. He's three and four in his last seven with losses coming against Arnold Allen, Islam Makashev, Michael Chandler, and Dustin Poirier. He's been in the UFC since 2014, um, 13 and eight in that time, finishing um, nine of his wins and has been finished in four of his losses. He's been a pro since 2009. I like Dan Hooker a lot. Um, I do think though, Gamrot is on this rise. Like when you look at who Hooker has lost to, it's Alan Makashev, Chandler and Poirier. That Allen one is the one that kind of sticks with you because Gamrot, I think is above Arnold Allen in the pecking order right now. And so I think Gamrot and the pressure that he brings can put a little bit of the, the, the pressure, um, pardon the pun, on a Dan Hooker as well. Now, Hooker has the talent and the ability and just the experience. He is going to see whatever um, Gamrot is going to, to bring at him. And so I do think this is going to be a close fight. I do think in the end, though, Matush Gamrot comes away with a, a really, really important win in his career. Um, and again, there, there just isn't a whole lot of gambling value on this one. Gamrod is a minus 345 favorite. So I guess, again, like if you want to just sprinkle on a couple underdogs here, Dan Hooker, I think is way more alive than plus 275 would lead you to believe. Um, but if you do think it is Gamrot, it's probably him by decision. And so to get him at minus 149 to win by decision isn't the worst. Um, and if you want to look at it, like, he just doesn't finish a whole lot of his fights. But um, plus 800 to get a win by knockout. Again, it's not the worst value to just kind of sprinkle something on. Um, then we get into the co-main event of the evening. It is Kaikara France going up against Steve Ursig. Um, you have France, who is 31 years old, born in Auckland, New Zealand, training at City Kickboxing, 24 and 11 with one no contest, 11 wins by knockout, three by submission. Um, he has been knocked out three times and has had three submission losses on the resume. His last bout, a split decision loss against Amir Albazi back at the UFC on ESPN on June 3rd. 2023 was his only fight of 2023 this is his first fight in 2024 back-to-back -back losses um the other loss a tko loss to brandon moreno in the interim flyweight championship bout uh that ended a three-fight winning streak for him he um has been uh he did finish two of three in that he's been in the ufc since 2018 seven and four is the record uh losses to moreno Royval and Albazi. Uh, he also locks to Alexander Pantoja on tough and has been a pro since 2010. He faces Ursig, who is 29 years old, uh, born in Perth, Australia. So he'll be the hometown guy training at Wilkes MMA. 12 and two for the career, two wins by knockout, six by submission, one decision loss on the resume. That came back at UFC 301 against Alexander Pantoja. Um, that was for the flyweight championship, ending an 11 fight winning streak. He has one KO in the UFC and one overall since 2019, three and one in the ultimate fighting championship and a pro since 2016. Um, I, I said before in the early storylines for this, Ursig is an intriguing fighter to me, but the, the interesting thing is he is coming off of a championship loss, and this is still probably the second most difficult opponent he has faced. Like, obviously, the first is Pantoja, um, who is the king in this division right now, but I don't think anyone on the resume comes close to what Kaikara France can bring. The issue is, is what does Kaikara France have here? Um, he's only fought, like I said, once in 2023, um, it's back-to-back -back losses. Now, one of those against Brandon Moreno, he has really only lost to some of the tippy top guys in this division, Moreno, Royval, um, Albazi, we're getting, 
getting down there a little bit, um, but it's a, a split decision loss there still. I still think Kai Kara France is the better fighter. And again, we're getting an underdog play here at plus 140. Now, maybe there's going to be some kind of Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi thing going on here with, with Ursig. But I do think Kai Kara France is still just a touch better than what Steve Ursig can bring to the octagon. And so I think we get Kai Kara France getting the win here at plus 140. If you are liking um, Ursig, I don't, think we have oh yes here we go uh ursig by decision is plus 115 so if you do think the favorite is going to win this i think that is a very obvious path to victory there um just flat over two and a half rounds is minus 238 so that's not um the the best um and will the fight go to a decision is minus one or minus 227 so again we're not getting the best value there but i i think kaikara france pulls off the, the the win in in what is apparently an upset and then we get to the main event of the evening it is for the middleweight championship as Dracus Duplessis defends against Israel Adesanya. Duplessis is 30 years old, born in South Africa, training at CIT MMA. Um, 21 and 2 for the MMA career, 19 wins by knockout, uh, sorry, 19 wins by finish, 9 by knockout, 10 by submission. Um, he has one knockout and one submission loss on the resume. His most recent bout was the one where he won the championship in split decision fashion against Sean Strickland at UFC 297 where he wins the middleweight title. It is a nine-fight winning streak he has stopped seven of nine. He's undefeated since entering the Ultimate Fighting Championship in 2020, a 7-0 record with five stoppages. Two-division champion in EFC in the middleweight and welterweight divisions, former KSW welterweight champion. He is a pro since 2013. Facing Israel Adesanya, now 35 years old, born in Lagos, Nigeria, now residing in Auckland, New Zealand, training at City Box. Uh, City kickboxing, sorry. He is 24 and 3, 18 wins by knockout. Sorry, 16 wins by knockout. Boy, I am all over the place today. Uh, eight wins by decision, one knockout, and two decision losses on the resume. His most recent loss is where he lost the belt to the guy that Duplessis won it from, where he lost by unanimous decision to Sean Strickland at UFC 293. He has lost two of his last three. Um, one win by decision, one win by, uh, sorry, one loss by decision, one loss by knockout. He does have the KO over Alex Pereira. That's back at UFC 287. That's his first KO win since a TKO victory over Paulo Costa at September 27th, 2020. He is a two-time middleweight champion. That's the first time anyone's been that in the history of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He's been in the UFC since 2018, 13 and 3 in that time. Five wins by knockout. A pro since 2012. Uh, he is also a pro kickboxer. This is a really, really close fight. Um, and I think deserving of a main event spot and a championship bout and one of the more intriguing fights of the year. I think Israel Adesanya is genuinely one of the best strikers this sport has ever seen. When you look at the accuracy, the the power that he can bring, although I said before, that power has kind of faded away as, as things have kind of gone on. And there have been some times, absolutely, where he has played with his food. That is not going to be the case here. The issue is... Um, where Sean Strickland had success against Israel Adesanya, Duplessis is better at that than than than, than Strickland is. And so I, I think, again, you are going to get a pressure style from Drickus Duplessis. The issue does become where Duplessis does have a better pressure style than Sean Strickland. Strickland has a governor on his. And not that Duplessis can get a little bit wild or crazy, but Strickland knew to put that pressure on, but in a way where he was staying away from the power of Israel Adesanya. And I'm not saying that Duplessis is dumb or anything like that. Um, all I am saying is that this is a fighter who can bring that forward pressure, bring that forward pressure, bring that forward pressure. And it worked for Alex Pereira until it didn't. And then he got punched and then he lost. Um, Israel Adesanya, if you leave an opening for him in any sense of the striking game, he will find that and he will take advantage of it. Duplessis is going to have to fight a perfect fight for 25 minutes in this. The thing is, though, I do think he is capable of doing just that. So I think Drickus Duplessis does come away with the victory in this bout and kind of takes over the mantle as the king of the middleweight division. When you look at it right now, Duplessis, the slightest underdog at minus 104. Duplessis by knockout is plus 350. That is really, really intriguing to me. Um, Duplessis by submission is plus 500. Um, you can maybe do a sprinkle on that one as well, but I'm just going to straight up go Drickus Duplessis just to win the damn thing at minus 104. So it should be a really, really fun night, UFC. 305. Um, that is the story from the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Let's move to the WWE as we are now past SummerSlam. Um, 
we only have a couple big shows until WrestleMania. And so I thought today it's a nice kind of midway point in the wrestling year. Let's look at what uh, we may have coming up at WrestleMania 41. Right, everyone loves fantasy booking, right? So coming out of SummerSlam, I thought now would be a good time to book ahead to WrestleMania. So here's my two-night WrestleMania. Uh, each night has seven matches on it. That's kind of been, um, th that, that was how they did it last year. And so that's how I'm going to do it this year. Night one. Um, this one admittedly is just kind of the catch-all for, I didn't have anything better for you. And I feel bad about that. Um, it is Randy Orton against Logan Paul against Andrade against Kevin Owens against LA Knight against Carmelo Hayes in a let's steal the show and have an absolutely crazy ladder match for the United States championship. Um, I do think that you would like to have more of these guys in a more marquee spot. Um, but there's, th this is the thing with WWE right now. There is, but so much room on this card to 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 build everything up. So that is where I went with that. I have the Wyatt Six against the New Day for the World Tag Team titles. I think what happens with the New Day here is they get it kind of figured out and on track. And I think the Wyatt Six, um, it, it's an interesting tie-in given the rivalry that the New Day had with the Wyatts back in the day. I, I think that's a nice little one at WrestleMania. Uh, then I have the Women's World Championship as Rhea Ripley goes up against Io Sky and Lyra Valkyria. Um, I, I think that like this, this is just one. If you guys know my my fantasy booking at all, you know that Eos guy is maybe my favorite performer in WWE right now. And so I bend over backwards to try to get her into championship championship opportunities. Um, anytime that I have the opportunity, and I think Lyra Valkyria is someone who should be kind of in that role a bit more prominently. Uh, then I have for the women's tag team titles. This is another one I've been banging the drum for a couple of years. I have Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch against Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. I think that um, I, I had this coming out of War Games last year. Uh, before Charlotte Flair got injured. Becky and Charlotte, they've never, like, we, we've had the four horsewomen, blah, 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 blah. They've never really, like, gone for it, gone for it. Um, I could see them tagging up and going for the tag team titles. Like, hey, let's, we don't know how many more runs this group has left. So let's give it a go with these two as the the real, um, a real tag team. You could put um, Bailey in there as well and do some form of a, a six woman there with Naomi. Um, but I, I think this would be the way it would go. Then I do have Rey Mysterio against Dominic Mysterio for the third year in a row. But this time, now that Dom has a win over Rey Mysterio, um, we, we need to up the stakes. And so I think we do hair versus mask or we do hair versus career. One of the two, but the, those often happen. You see the Lucha masks behind me. Those often happen in in, in Lucha Libre. And so I, I think they are really, I, I think that's the way it's going to go. So the rubber match between those two gets off there. Um, Braun Breaker against John Cena. John Cena's last WrestleMania, that this is a chance to really launch Braun Breaker into another stratosphere. And I'm not just talking about just a match um, because they've tried that a few times and it hasn't really worked. I, I think that, John Cena versus Braun Breaker in an actual build would be really, really fun and really intriguing to do. And then in the main event of night one, I have Cody Rhodes defending the WWE Championship against Jacob Fatu. I think we all see Jacob Fatu as a potential main eventer. Um, and I, I, I think he gets his opportunity probably post a bloodline civil war. Um, but I could see him being the Royal Rumble winner and getting his shot at Cody Rhodes. Uh, night two, I have Liv Morgan against Asuka. Um, Liv deserves to be on here and Asuka forever deserves to be on a card. And so I think those two could have a, a pretty fun match. Um, WWE tag team titles. I have the Usos back together, taking on the Gorillas of Destiny, taking on the Street Profits. Intercontinental title. I have a big meaty men smacking meat. It is Braun Strowman against Bronson Reed for the Intercontinental Championship. The WWE Women's title, Tiffany Stratton against Trish Stratus. They tease this at Money in the Bank in Toronto. Um, I would imagine we get some other kind of a tease at the Royal Rumble, and then you give Tiffany Stratton a gigantic match coming up at WrestleMania. Um, I've said these guys are dancing around each other. Let's just finish it all off. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, WrestleMania 41. That's let, let's just finish this rivalry. Have these guys around each other all year, and let's do the thing at Mania for the world title. Gunther going up against Sami Zayn. I think this would be such a fun way to a elevate Sami Zayn. 
Um, and but B play into what we saw at WrestleMania last year. Like, look, you've had this title reign for a long time. I'm pretty good at ending title reigns at WrestleMania. And for Gunther, this is the the one thing that has continued to haunt him. He he hasn't really addressed it at all. He's just kind of blown past it. Sami Zayn can kind of poke and prod. We get an Elimination Chamber win. And now all of a sudden, Sami Zayn is the number one contender. I think that story would be incredible for WrestleMania. And in the main event of night two, Roman Reigns against The Rock. There's no way it's not going to be that. Um, given the the final boss involvement, I would imagine that when we get, like I said, some kind of a bloodline civil war where the, the Rock is actually the one who has been in charge of the Solo Sokoa group this whole time. Roman Reigns has his kind of OG group and it, it, it all culminates at WrestleMania in Las Vegas, Nevada. All right, that is going to do it for uh, a fighting Friday. We still have a football Friday coming up as well. Also, uh, for Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans, you see the Rider stuff behind me. Uh, I taped an episode of the Rider Happy Hour. That is out wherever you are getting this now. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, if you are watching, make sure you like it. If you're listening, make sure you review it both places. Make sure that you subscribe. Um, and I will talk to all of you later. Follow me on social media and have a great day, everybody. I am out.